Are you ready to halt? Uh, <laughs> like, no, well, no, I just kind of was walking like my tail between my leg and my head was down. I was like, oh my god. All this work and, and nothing to show for it. <laughs> Alright guys, uh, so, oh, what happened here? That's C. <laughs> C spine again. again. Double C spine? Let's do this again. We did C spine. Okay, so we're going to do T spine down, all the way down. All right, here. All right. All right, so T spine. So, again, just a, a quick review on the typical vertebrae. As, uh, so, keep this in mind as we go. <laughs> Is that a whoopee cushion? Is that a whoopee cushion? Did you just pop? <laughs> <laughs> what was that? Is that you? I was laughing at you. Uh, <laughs> Alright, so again, typical vertebrae, keep all the circles. Yeah, so you come back. <laughs> He's like, um, sir, am I allowed to come back? <laughs> you made it. Yeah, you're good. So everything's, everything's full. Yeah, I just I got there at 7 o'clock this morning. And uh, I'm the idiot who didn't get a... Uh, an appointment. An appointment. You do an appointment. Yeah. To yeah. DMV? Yeah. He's a fool. The last time I went, I was out in an hour and a half. Yeah. On Halloween. But they're changing it from Halloween. the paper to like digital yeah. stuff. They don't use real numbers anymore, so you don't have down. a clue how far away you are from being called. Uh huh. They use your initials and your. Well, I was I was at the DMV number. about three months ago, yeah. and I made an appointment. I was in and out in literally five minutes. I learned yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Don't yeah. Don't just walk in. <laughs> I they didn't open until 9, I showed up two hours before they opened, and I was like 30th in line. Also, there wasn't really line farming at that time. You know, what's also, what's also good is if you go to Google, it'll give you the list of all the DMVs, and then it'll tell you which is the busiest, or the less and less busiest DMV. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I get it. Okay. All right, so quick again, just a quick review on the vertebrae has to go through the uh, go through thoracic so we have the body it projects down to the pedicles and transfers it comes back into the lamina and then you have the uh, spinous process okay I'm just gonna do we, do we know this I'm, gonna go. I'm just gonna keep on going let's go, go. okay thoracic thoracic correct characteristics what makes the thoracic vertebrae different from the typical vertebrae is that they do have facets and demi facets for rib articulation. You have a total of 12 vertebrae that matches up with the 12 sets of ribs. So this facets, one is attached, uh, one you will find at the surface of the vertebral body and the other facets that you will find in the surface of the transverse processes. Okay, so just quickly, this is what's going to form two different types of joints for rib articulation. You guys remember the rib? This was last semester. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the anterior part, I'm sorry, the posterior part of the rib is the head. And the head, when joined with one of the smooth surfaces here on the body, that's going to form the costal vertebral joint the costal vertebral joint. Now if we look over here, T1 has a full facet on the upper body and demi facets on the lower body. This is just on T1. So you have a full facet on the top and a half or a demi facet on the lower body of T1. T2 to T8, we have half or demi facets on the upper and lower bodies through <coughs> T2 to T8. On T9, you have a demi facet on the upper body, and through T10 and T12, you have full facets. Okay, and this is what's going to form the costal vertebral joints. Now, the second part of the rib articulation is the costal transverse joints. Costal transverse joint. And this is where that rough surface, this tubercle of the rib, articulates <coughs> with a facet of the transverse process. So the tubercle of the rib articulating with the transverse process. Okay? Any questions so far? All right, so T1 and T10, the facets are, are, are for the constal transverse joints. Um, 
Okay. Let's talk about how they look. Any questions about the rib articulation? So costal vertebral and costal transverse joints. Head with a vertebrae, tubercle with a transverse process. No questions? All right. Um, T1 to T4. T1 to T4 resembles that of the cervical vertebrae. Now, as we make our way down the vertebral column, they go from, they go from small to thicker. Okay, so T1 and T4, they, they still closely resemble that of the cervical vertebrae in size and shape. And as it weight, makes its way down towards the mid thorax, T5 to T8, is your typical thoracic vertebrae. And then once we get to T9, they get a lot thicker, more dense, and they start resembling that of the lumbar vertebrae. You will also notice that as it makes its way down the column, the spinous process starts to project inferior, inferiorly downward. Okay, it starts to project downward as it makes its way down the column. Bless you. That's you. All right, any questions? All right. Um, so T9 and T12 resembles that of a typical lumbar. Uh, here we have pictures of the sets for uh, 10th to 12th rib. Costa transverse. Okay, going back to the costa transverse. So this is the uh, articulation between the typical of the rib and the transverse process. T1 and T10 has full facets on the transverse processes, while T11 and T12 have no facets. Anything unusual about rib 10, I'm sorry, ribs 11 and 12? The floating ribs? They're your floating okay. ribs. Okay, so that's why they don't have the uh, facets for T11 and T12. Okay? All right, the type of joints for the, the ribs, they are, they are encapsulated in synovium, so it is, it is movable. Okay, that allows us to move around, be flexible. Um, if it was very stiff and rigid, we'd be breaking ribs every, every time. Okay, but it has to allow for that movement. It, allows, it also expands and contracts when we breathe. Okay, that is all. All right, so your typical uh, thoracic vertebrae, very, again, very similar. You've got your body, also body comes off what? Okay, pedicles. Flares out to transverse process. Transverse comes back. Lamina. Okay, lamina and then spinous process. process. What is this? Vertebral foramina. Vertebral foramina. Okay. Um, on the very top, because this is the superior view, this is a smooth surface right here. Superior articular process. Superior articular process. And then right below that, inferior articular inferior. process. Inferior. Now, what is this? Not inferior not. notch. Okay, notch. So this is your inferior notch. This is your superior notch. All right. Uh, all right. So I only had one, um, a couple of things here that you don't have here on your slide because it was pointing to the facets or facets. I was a little bit more specific. This is the facet for the tubercle of the transverse, and this is the facet off the body for the head of the rib. So you can just add that on. The, as we said before, the zygopoxial joint is the same as the C-spine. It is formed by the superior articulating facet of one and the inferior articulating facet of the uh, one above it. That's gonna form your zygopoxial joints. And then we have the intervertebral foramina that is gonna be formed by the inferior and uh, inferior and superior vertebral notches. Okay. We good? Mm -hmm. Let's keep on going. All right. To visualize the zygopophyseal joints, firstly, how do we how do we visualize the zygopophyseal joints in the cervical spine? Lateral. Lateral. Okay. 
for the T-spine, it's the oblique. Okay, it's going to be the oblique. So to visualize the oblique, the patient is almost in a true lateral. Almost in a very true lateral. And from the lateral, you're just going to have them dip their shoulders back about 20 degrees. That's it. Very subtle, just about 20 degrees from the lateral. That's your oblique. It's always posterior then, right? So, well, it's not always posterior. You can also have an anterior oblique. Um, so if you do it posterior, then you're looking at the zygopopensile joints that's further, furthest away from the image receptor. It's the same thing then. Yeah, same thing. And if you're doing, and you can also do one of these, instead of going backwards, you can do a slight oblique forward, and now you're Side looking down. at the, um, the joint closest to the image receptor. Did everybody get that? Mm -hmm. So if it's a posterior oblique, it's the zygopopensile these little joints that's furthest away from the image receptor, and if it's an anterior oblique, it's the one closest to the image receptor. Okay, they're very difficult to see, um, and they're not very common to do in um, in the radiology department. The most common use for doing a T-spine is just an AP in the lateral. Rarely is it done on an oblique, but on occasion you will get an order for an oblique T-spine. Has anyone seen a T-spine yet? Okay, other than the scoliosis studies. Okay, you have, okay. Uh, what's the reason of doing a T-spine? Motorcycle what? accident. Motorcycle accident? I don't remember. Mm -hmm. don't remember? <laughs> Car accident, okay. Mm -hmm. All right, and so what were you? What were you guys' views? AP lateral. I think it was AP lateral, okay. yeah. Did you guys do any obliques? I don't think Again, so. Again, not typical. I thought I remember, yeah. No. Yeah, this is not usual. So yeah, the two main views is an AP and a lateral. On occasion, you will get an oblique. Doesn't happen that often. Okay. Okay, now. How do we visualize the intervertebral foramina in a C-spine? Obliques. In a C-spine. Obliques. In oblique. Okay. In a T-spine, it's bilateral. So it's the opposite. Yeah. So if this is just flipped. It's just the opposite of what the C-spine is. All right. So to visualize the intervertebral foramina for the T-spine, it is a true lateral. True lateral. Okay? Now, what's different, what is different from a T-spine in a, in a chest x-ray? You guys all know how to do a chest x-ray, right? Mm -hmm. So the difference is collimation. Mm -hmm. That's it. Yeah. It's like doing a chest x-ray, but you're just collimating to the area of interest. It would still be at the level of T7. And how do we find T7? Shock. Three to four inches Shock below the juggler notch, or seven to eight from the vertebral. Are prominence. they the opposite? Like as far as one being lateral and one being oblique, is because this one the convex curve and the other one the concave curve? Uh, what do you mean? How this one a lateral gives oh, us? Are you talking about the C spine? Yeah. It's the T spine. Yeah. It's just the way that the anatomy starts to lay itself out. That's okay. it. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> okay. So there's your summary right there. So for cervical. To demonstrate the intervertebral foramina, you're going to do an oblique. Okay, Zy uh, for zygomopophyseal joints, it's the lateral. Oh, this was another thing that I was reading on your guys' test. I said which which structures or uh, anatomy is best demonstrated on the lateral. And some of you guys put spinous process, which is you do see the spinous process, but we don't do a lateral to visualize the spinous uh, process. We're doing a lateral to see the alignment. And that's the first thing that you do when someone is, is coming through the ER with trauma with a neck brace. We don't care about the spinous process. What are we looking for? Alignment of the zygopophyseal joints. Okay, so I just wanted to bring that up. Okay, so thoracic, now it's just the opposite. To the, uh, demonstrate the foramen, it's going to be a lateral. And then zygopophyseal joint, it's going to be a posterior oblique. I'm sorry, a 70, uh, 70 degree oblique. It can either be posterior or anterior, but just remember if it's posterior, you're looking on the upside. If it's an anterior, you're looking at the downside, closest to the image receptor. Okay? All right, some landmarks. Um, again, it's just like a chest x ray, all right? So, Sternal notch is going to be at the level of T2 to T3, mm -hmm. which is just a couple of inches from the um, 
the vertebral prominence of T1, okay, from here to about a couple inches, okay? Bless you. Jugular notch, sternal notch is the level T2, T3. Sternal angle. T4, T5. Okay, T4, T5. Mid thorax. T7. T7. Okay, just like a chest x ray, just like a rib. Xiphoid tip is at the level of T10. T10. Okay, it's also to go know the, diff, uh, the distances between each of the landmarks. So from C7 to the notch, it's like one and a half inches. From the, from the notch to the angle, two inches. Okay, and from the notch to the mid-thorax uh, mid is about three to four inches. Okay, remember chest x-ray, about a, a fist width. Bless you. Allergies? Yeah. Anybody got Claritin for her? I take She has good drugs and they're not you working. You have good drugs? They're not working. They're just not working. <laughs> 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 you have good drugs? He's like, you ain't sharing? Okay, topical topical <laughs> landmarks. More than topical landmarks. So now we have a we have an anterior and a posterior view. So again, xiphoid tip. You know what? Let me change this up a little bit. Like that. Damn! <laughs> that's, that's, is, that, is that the rock or what? <laughs> that is the rock. <laughs> focus! <laughs> Alright. So, yeah, focus over here. <laughs> that's pretty good. Oh, now I can't get rid of it. It's good. Leave it. <laughs> Alright, side foot tip. Hey, you're, you're, tip. you're waiting for that one, huh? I was. <laughs> All right, uh, T7, three to four inches below the uh, the notch, and then the struggle angle is T4 to five. We can't listen oh. to what you're saying. Wait, 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 wait,
cup filter was thick on the sides and very thin down the middle. Does this so, matter though with digital or no? I'm gonna, well, I'm going to ask you that. So we don't use... You guys don't use a filter? No. We don't even need, take into consideration the anal heel effect. Okay. <laughs> you guys don't even take that into consideration because, yeah. All right, so what am I even talking about? <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to save you time. <laughs> Okay, so I was going to talk about the lip blocker. Okay, the lip blocker, we've done also tests using the lip blocker. Now, the, what is the whole purpose of the lip blocker? Catch the scatter? Catch the scatter radiation, exactly, because we want our image to be more black and white. Mm -hmm. So it cleans out any scatter radiation. So it's not just the collimation, tight collimation, but we also want to clean out any scatter radiation from reaching the image receptor. So it's almost like a grid in a sense. It, it kind of. So we're cleaning it out before it reaches the, the image mm -hmm. receptor. So Ms. Smith and I did a study using a phantom. We shot one like this without a lead blocker. We looked at the S numbers, and then we did it again with a blocker. The S numbers were almost the same. Yeah, no, they're almost the same. Image quality any different? Image, well, because it's uh, digital. It's, yeah, because it's digital, it cleans everything oh. up. Yeah, so we didn't care so much about the image. We you were more concerned about you know, exposure. Yeah, if we if we um, without the lead blocker, the numbers for S should be a lot higher because remember they're inversed, so the S number should be higher. Okay, but it, it again was nearly the same. So. And that's why I wanted to ask you guys, if you guys are doing this, it's probably because you're learning this from the old school techs. Uh, the interns. Oh, the interns are doing this too? Yeah. Okay. They probably learned it. I mean, there's nothing wrong with doing it. I mean, why not? Okay, but that's the whole purpose of putting this lead strip behind the, the patient's back. It's just to clean it up a little bit. Okay, all right, any questions here? Lastly, um, breathing technique, especially with the lateral T-spine, because we talked about a breathing technique for um, swimmers. There's also going to be a, a breathing technique that will be incorporated with the, uh, a lateral T. And I'll show you guys that in just a moment. All right. So first one here, AP, AP T-spine. Central ray is going to be at the level of? T7. You guys did this already. How do we find T7? One fist from the jugular okay. niche. No, no, front. So we're going to do the front. So what is it? Fist. It's going to be the fist width. Okay? So it's going to be about the fist width, three to four inches below the notch, close collimation of approximately 7 by 17. So you will be using a large image receptor, large detector, but collimate to the area of the uh, T-spine. For a T-spine, we want them to hold their breath on expiration. Why not inspiration? Why expiration? Remember where the, the spine lies? It lies between what? Between the lungs. So expiration, because we're trying to get rid of as much of the air as possible to give you better and uniform density and contrast on your image. We're trying to get rid of the air. So we do it on expiration. So take a deep breath in, blow it out, take a deep breath in, hold it. Hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it. What did I say? Take it out and breathe out. And then you said take another breath in and hold it. You're doing a test. No, we play that. I know I said breathe out and hold it. He said breathe out. Nick has video. Yeah. <laughs> I'll I edit it. I know I said breathe out and hold it. Right before you said breathe in, you did. It's all good. I believe you. <laughs> all right. What's SID is 40 inches. Yeah, so everything is still going to be at 40 inches because there is no uh, OID. Okay. Are we good? Mm -hmm. All right. So C7, because we need evidence, we need a starting point. Okay. How do we know if we got T1 if we can't see C7? So we want to see at least C7. All right. So C7 to L1 will be demonstrated, but vertebral bodies will penetrate it with optimal exposure factors. Um, we can even do better if we collimate a little bit tighter okay, to get rid of the lung field done on expiration. Okay, you guys do yours on expiration? I believe so, yeah. Or you just say hold your breath. Mm -hmm. Expiration, <laughs> expiration. Hold your breath. No, just yeah. hold your breath? Just hold your breath, okay. yeah. All right, so again, for optimum imaging, try to do it on expiration. All right, lateral. So lateral, we're gonna place the patient on their side, knee slightly bent, 
one over the other. It kind of ma helps maintain their uh, balance, and they put their arms in front of them also to help maintain balance. So we say lay on your side, make like you're praying. As you put them on their side, you want to go at either end of the table to make sure that their back is lined up with the length of the table. Okay. So don't just roll them up on their side. Also look at the top end and the bottom end to make sure that they're lined up with the table because we want their, uh, their vertebrae to be as straight as possible. Okay. You may have to use a bolster, especially if they have narrow hips, uh, I'm sorry, nar narrow waist, large hips, so that can change the angle. So you may have to put a bolster up mm. to correct the alignment of their back. Someone who has a broad shoulder, and this is why I put this here. This wasn't here before, but this is an extra marking that I put. Because it says here, if someone who has a wide shoulder, it's going to cause the spine to curve with a thicker shoulder. And it says if, they have, if they're broad shouldered, you may have to use uh, three to five degree cephalic angulation to open up that, uh, those spaces. Okay? All right? And again, if you guys want to use a lead blocker, you can do so. It helps clean up the image. The angulation would be cotted if you're using it. It should be a uh, cephalic. cephalic. Yeah, towards the head. Oh. Yeah, because if it's going this way. Oh, I got you. Yeah, you want to match it. Okay, so central ray is going to be mid coronal plane. Does it look like it's mid coronal? No, not at all. Okay, so the key here is. Think about where the vertebral column is. It's going to be very posterior. All right. So find where your mid-coronal plane is, okay, and then slightly go posterior to that. Okay. Um, chest purpose, central radius mid-coronal. Okay. Practical purpose. Practical purpose. Find mid-coronal and go posterior to that. Now, because we are shooting through lungs, shooting through ribs, uh, are we going to have our patient hold their breath, or do we want a breathing technique for the lateral? Breathing, breathing technique. So consider now, how do you guys do it? Breathing. You guys do breathing, or you just sing both? You sing both, okay. So if you do breathing technique, you do get a better image because the ribs and the lung field are blurred out. You see better definition on the vertebral bodies. Now, you're not going to get uniform density again because the spinal, uh, spinal uh, spine does go through the, the lung field, so there may be some differences in, in densities. Okay. So again, T1 to L1 should be demonstrated. Are we going to see maybe T1? Mm -hmm. Yes or no? Probably not because we've got the shoulder. See, if you look over here, you know, so thick here, you're not really seeing a good visualization in this area. Sorry, it's Ms. Mitz. <laughs> Hello? Yeah. Um, did everybody train their badges? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Downy PIH? Yeah. Oh, okay. Jen, okay. I didn't turn my, I don't Jen has, uh, how many do you have, Jen? I have four. She has four. Oh, so she has four of the, from the interns. From the interns. Yeah. Okay, she has four from the interns, from PIH. Okay. Uh, is that the only one you're missing? Okay. Okay. You're welcome. Okay. Bye. Uh, technology. Sometimes I just want to. Yeah, so just, uh, do you have them? Yeah. I'll take them. Ugh. <sighs>